our whole lives, like as kids and stuff like that, you know, when you live in a place, your parents are like, don't write on the walls, don't write on the walls, you know? And then once you get into graffiti, that's exactly what you do, you know? I'd see like some park semis parked behind my, my ma's house when there was a bunch of construction and I, I was about it, you know, and I was like, I'd even take a Sharpie marker and just go write something on it and then have my grandmother come like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm sorry, grandma. I just love this stuff. I can't help it. I just, I feel like I got to do it. I can't help it. My favorite type of art to paint is anything with spray paint. I couldn't get the same opportunities as some of my friends um, and I just went to the streets. Graffiti, in a sense, is just necessarily a word that is the act of painting on something illegally. If you go to caveman, you go like all the way down humanity, there's something that's written down. In a sense, hieroglyphics are the same thing that we do. The thing is, graffiti and a street artist is what's the real difference. I believe street art is different from graffiti because for my work, it always has a message. Yeah, street art and graffiti are two totally different things. Graffiti is like, I'm putting my name on this. This name is the embodiment of my art, of me as an artist. My goal is to get that name everywhere. My goal is to have everyone know who that is without knowing my face. Everywhere, 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 everywhere. On a bus, on a train, on a building, on a bridge. Graffiti artists can be street artists, you know, and street artists can be graffiti artists, but graffiti is not street art, you know? It's not stencils, it's not murals. Graffiti is all about our names. I don't believe street art is just about looks. I believe it's a, a city saying, we, we appreciate art. We appreciate the artists, we appreciate the creatives, because that's what truly moves the city, is art, yeah. Without artwork, we would just be looking at boring brown, gray buildings. And in terms of murals in the city of Madison, they're just all over the place. I've been on the Arts Commission for about nine years now, and the Arts Commission needs to approve uh, mural designs that are going up in places that will be seen by the public. Oh, I think a lot more businesses, instead of putting up a big sign or having them do an advertisement on the side, they're like, people are going to look over no matter what we paint on here. And, um, and I think that worked out to Mother Fool's benefit over the years, is why it became such a popular coffee shop down there on Willie Street, is because they always had a different mural up there every few weeks. And um, so other businesses are kind of taking that same approach with allowing graffiti writers, street artists, you know, mural painters to paint the sides of their building. I love that these projects are getting out into neighborhoods that don't have as much public art. Some parts of Madison have lots of public art and every park has a sculpture, but neighborhoods like Meadow Ridge haven't had um, quite as much access. So it takes longer often than a lot of artists and community members would like because there are many steps to go through. Sometimes the art can't wait. Street art or graffiti, sometimes it really can't wait. We have to get out there. The State Street mural project that happened last June really was where all of these issues came together. And I was in Minnesota uh, during the shutdown last year, and I left three days before George Floyd was murdered. city knew what to do and that was invest in the artists and I believe that was the perfect call. Shop owners were quick to board up their windows. There was an instinct to beautify. Um, we were just told yeah there's um, a lot of spaces downtown and these businesses want these boards painted. And the mayor then told Karin like let's hire um, let's hire a bunch of artists to do this work. It was literally probably within hours they reached out to several artists of color and kind of gave us the freedom to go paint on these boards um, just to beautify the city and also uh, share our voices. By 
by giving us permission and uh, freedom, um, it kind of set the tone of this is what we're here for. We're not trying to destroy, we're trying to uh, rebuild. And it inspired me to go so hard as a painter, not as a tattoo artist, not even as an artist, but as a painter, to where I did three murals in that week. I painted 65 hours that week. I had mixed emotions because I, I felt blessed, um, but the reason why it was happening was just so devastating. Um, but the reason why I felt blessed is because I did have that permission. At that point, I truly felt freedom. That was one of the rare points in my life where I didn't have to ask anyone and I had permission from the city, which was very powerful. That wasn't a permanent art project. None of that artwork was um, done with materials that are meant to last for 10 years. Some elements of that project that are very powerful are still still in place, even though a lot of the, um, a lot of the murals now have come down as places are reopening. And now that the boards are being taken away, um, I don't feel hurt at all. When I created these pieces, I, it was about the experience. Um, it was about the memories and the meaning of why we were even outside. Now that we, I believe, are on the, on the rise from this pandemic, it is a chance to invest in the city. And that means, to me, investing in uh, creatives. Let them amplify the voices of the unheard. I believe it can spark a lot of change.